Hi friends, welcome to the wild side. I'm Steve Hall. Bats can be scary creatures when you see their sharp teeth or hear their menacing screech. And especially if you buy into the dark comic book or old Hollywood hype, they give bats a bit of a bad rap. When you look at it from a scientific standpoint, bats are among our best friends, helping protect our food supplies and feeding on insects that carry diseases. And so it shouldn't come as a surprise that biologists from the Nature Conservancy, federal agencies, and also some farmers believe it's important to protect bats. Now that requires some up close and personal encounters and even a few chase scenes. A light drizzle drops into the already rain swollen creek. A hard rain would likely bring a rapid end to this night of research. But the biologist leading the project hopes for the best as he eyes his destination and climbs rocky terrain. So we're out here in Jackson County in front of some caves that uh, serve as a maternity colony for gray bats. They're an endangered species and they raise their young in this cave. I'm soldering the wires together to activate the battery. Other scientists and interns stay back to assist with preparations and calculations. These bats eat pretty much their own weight in bugs every night and we've got you know, 10,000 plus probably in this cave. That's a lot of insects. Uh, the value of bats to humans is really, really high. Outside the gated and locked cave, Corey Holiday sets a trap to capture just a few from the thousands of gray bats that will fly out at last light for their evening meal. So we're gonna use what we call a harp trap to place out in front of the entrance. And a harp trap is just a very basic frame, aluminum frame with two parallel vertical strands of fishing line and a bag underneath, and the bats fly into that fishing line and fall into the bag and, and can't fly out. We've used them on probably hundreds of occasions. I've never seen an injury to a bat. They seem to be very uh, soft and benign to the bats, and a really good way to catch the bats and, and be able to handle them, work them up very quickly, and release them without any, any real impacts to the bats. Avoiding injury to gray bats is important. While this particular project will last only a few days, Gray bats have been on the federal endangered list since 1976. They are found in the cave regions of the southeastern United States and the Ozarks. The gray bat is a species that we've watched for quite a while. We're doing a lot of things to conserve it. We've got a lot of good partners we're working with. We've gated a lot of caves, um, especially the hibernation caves, and uh, it's really helping the gray bat. Along with the gating, uh, we're doing things to benefit water quality, which helps that forage base for the gray bats. These bats, we've known for years that they often forage over water, but they use a lot of different caves after they have their pups and after they are done lactating and feeding their pups. And so we're interested how they use the landscape. Are they just flying river corridors or are they flying over ridges? And, um, and so this will help us develop strategies to um, to protect these caves and to determine which caves are the most important. How do we look at the long-term success of this species? Lightning streaks across the distant sky, but the soft light of the moon, just 48 hours from full, peers through the clouds and around thickets of leaves. The threat of a storm is all but over, and bats leaving the cave get caught in the trap as planned. We'll catch uh, probably a couple dozen bats or so, and we'll sort through them. A lot of them, probably half will be males, half will be females. Some of them might still be uh, nursing young, and we let those go immediately. Um, so we're looking for these adult females, and we try to get a big, healthy one that's, that's no longer nursing her, her pup, and that's the one that we'll identify to put a transmitter on. A rabies vaccination and thick protective gloves are required for handling the bats. The Nature Conservancy, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency are all represented on the team. I think it's important when we work on these big conservation projects that we form these, um, these good partnerships that, that allow us to put our expertise to work together to, to accomplish you know, common goals. He is lactating. The selection Just process begins, but so even those ruled out for the transmitter will still provide valuable data. Some of the other ones we may put little, uh, little bands on their wings, and that will help us identify them down the road. If we see them in the wintertime hibernating in a cave, we'll identify that band, write down the band number, and that gives us another connection. So it gives us, we know two points on the map where those bats have been, and we can generally assume somewhere in between there they've migrated. 
The tiny bats are weighed and measured, and it doesn't take long to identify the one that will lead tonight's research. We're going to band this one, and then we're going to get a transmitter on it. The banding is easy if you know what you're doing. It's the transition from biologist to barber that can be a bit daunting. I've put on hundreds of radio transmitters, but still when I start cutting the fur, I get a little bit nervous and, and just try to be real careful to make sure I don't make a mistake. Surgical glue is used to attach the transmitter, and while everyone is waiting for it to dry, there's time to ponder the characteristics of these creatures that attract this kind of attention. People think of them often as flying rodents, but they're actually much more closely related to humans than rodents. They're very intelligent. They're altruistic. They've been shown time and time again to care, bring food and care for elderly bats and sick bats in their community and in their colony. And also, you know, I feel like everything on our planet has value and has some purpose, some niche to fill. Uh, some of those are more or less directly impacting humans, and bats are very directly impacting us, just out here eating thousands of insects. Uh, they're sort of called the farmer's best friend. A fairly recent study estimated that in Tennessee, the value of bats just to agriculture is about $313 million a year. Uh, so without them, we'd be in trouble. Roger that. It'll be about three minutes. Once ready, the bat is assigned tracking number 187. It reflects the VHF, or very high frequency, of its transmitter. The bat is released. Ground crews get ready to go. And all attention is on the airborne tracker. All right. Now we go chase. And then we have an airplane that'll be overhead and several ground crews. And we're going to try and follow that bat with little receivers. Uh, and they just kind of work. The closer you get to the bat, the louder it beeps. And uh, the further the bat is from you, the softer the beep gets. And we'll try to keep up with her. And these bats can fly pretty fast. Uh, that's why we have the airplane here in this hilly terrain. Oh, there's the plane right there. Uh, then hopefully we can keep up with one. Actually, there are two bats on their radar. The one just released and number 063 the bat outfitted with a transmitter just last night. Dave, it sounds like she's moving on down the river uh, towards you. So I think that we're gonna go over to Blunt Ferry Road and see if she continues heading downstream. The transmitters typically fall off within three weeks, but the information provided for the survival of the endangered gray bats will last much longer. And we're trying to understand uh, how these bats are using the landscape so we can uh, you know, sort of shape development in Tennessee. You know, Tennessee's growing and developing constantly, and we're trying to make sure we're uh, not having undue impacts on these bats. At any point in time, one of these bats could jump and fly, you know, 20, 30 miles to a brand new cave. And I suspect, you know, that eventually we will get some, you know, some interesting uh, data like that, but you just gotta, gotta follow them and see what happens. But it's a mystery, you never know until you put the transmitter on and get the plane in the air and the truck's on the ground and go look and see what happens. You can track our website, wildsidetv.com, for more information about all the work being done for the survival of endangered bats. Wild Side is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks, where you can discover our state's diverse heritage through spectacular landscapes, family-friendly recreation, and affordable lodging. Tennessee State Parks, fun and adventure naturally. And also with support from Nissan, working together with the Nature Conservancy to fulfill its mission of conserving land and water on which all life depends and now celebrating 40 years of conservation in Tennessee. Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. <laughs>